Hey guys, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, it's been a couple of weeks since we began this journey preparing towards the Secret Place Challenge. If you've not registered for the Secret Place Challenge, I wonder what you're waiting for. You totally should get yourself in the room. It's completely free. You're going to be able to practice God's presence again. You're going to be able to build relationship with God. Many of us have fallen out of love with God. And one of the pushes of this is for us to fall in love with God again, to be able to be excited about God and the things of God again, to be able to run with the energy and the strength that we started with. Because many of us have lost strength, we've lost energy, we've become offended with God and in God. So the aim of this is to just come out of that place of offense, come out of that um, burden of offense, but now begin to build a life that is worthy of God. Not in the performance kind of way, but in taking our time to become who God has intended for us to become one of the free resources that was made available for you is the resource of um one of my first books in fact it's my first book that i wrote and um it was a collaborative book that i wrote with somebody else and um secret place i think is the name of the book and then you're going to be getting daily prompts daily videos and all of that it's just going to be a powerful powerful month so get in the room, get registered, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm super, super excited already. Huh, this this year is already a busy year, but I know that um, we're going to not lose track of what really matters because in the midst of all the noise, it's very important that our gaze is fixed on what matters. And that's why today's question is so powerful for me because um, I want to... I want to answer two questions in one really. Um, this question says, why is consistency in building intimacy with God hard? And what do you do when you can't seem to get it right? The reason why we think that consistency is hard is because we are doing it. For example, if I feel that I have to um, do exercise every day, if I feel like I have to do exercise every day, I'm going to get exhausted because I'm going to get drained. I'm going to feel pain in my body. I'm going to feel discomfort that I'm not familiar with. And I'm going to choose to stop instead of feeling the pain because nobody likes to feel in pain. Nobody likes to feel uncomfortable. Nobody, nobody likes that odd feeling, right? You don't like it. I don't like it. Absolutely no one does. And that's completely understandable. That's part of life. However, there's the double-edged side of it, the other side of it, where we must now learn that it is who we are. Instead of saying that I want to go and exercise, which is an action that I need to do, how about I say I want to be fit? So that even if I feel pain, even if I feel like I don't like vegetables to um, eat healthy and all of that, I would rather eat junk food. The fact that it is who I am becoming, right? Because if who I am becoming sinks into me, my actions will align with it naturally. So if I see who I'm going to become by eating right, by going to the gym every time, then it's very easy for me to endure the pain of um, the gym or the abstract taste of vegetables. It's very easy for me to do all that. So who you're becoming will help you to make the right decision towards what you're doing. So one of the first questions I will want to ask you is, why do you want a relationship with God? And who are you going to become in the process of that relationship? You see, for me, it's about being in his image and his likeness and being an, a worthy ambassador of God on the earth. It's about representing God in everything that he has called me to be. So even when I don't feel like it, I remember, oh, rejoice, this is not about you. You are representing God. You are his ambassador on the earth. 
you know imagine if the ambassador of the united states to nigeria just comes out and starts smoking on the street in public sight of everybody or starts behaving or wearing um an outfit that shows cleavage and has a very long slit in the presence of everybody you remember in that moment that that ambassador is representing the president of the united states and the entire nation at large and so their actions are indicative of the or an indicting of the nation entirely and so that means that if i'm going to be representing god i must really look at my life and say rejoice is what you're wearing representing god is the way that you intend to speak to this person is it representing god is what you're doing right now is it representing god is the way that you're reacting to this matter is god well represented will god feel proud of the way you handled this and so every morning i show up not to do relationship with god but to reflect god in every part of my life but to represent him but to commune with him until i become like him so my showing up daily is not to fulfill a religious obligation it's not just because my mother told me every morning you wake up and you pray because one thing that i found is that your perspective determines your outcome your perspective determines your ability to see clearly and to know why you're seeing the way that you're seeing and one of the books that i'm going to be releasing in ne next month i believe is called perspective seen from the eyes of and the lenses of the father because many times as believers one of the reasons why we struggle so hard we struggle the way that we do is because we're not seeing rightly we're not um we're not harnessing our expectations rightly. We're not managing our expectations rightly. So who are you trying to be by showing up every day to walk with God, by being in relationship with God, by what are you trying to achieve? What's your aim? What's your end game? If you can see the end, then you will have a reason to wake up every morning. Miles Monroe says, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. And one of the ways that I'll put it is when vision is not clear, then there is no drive. There is no, there is no, there is no what's that extra um to go that motivation for you to go and for you to pursue and achieve what you're seeking to achieve so you need that motivation you need that um you need the perspective you need the drive you need to see it you need to understand it you need to push it you need to you need to be drawn to it it can't just be you trying to move it on the days that you feel like it because vision makes you move even on the days that you don't feel like it vision makes you go even on the days where you're not comfortable with it right and so asking what do you do when you can't seem to get it right number one have a vision for your relationship with god you know i read um hello tomorrow by dr cindy trim and in that book she talked about the different areas of your life where you should create a vision for and one of the things that really stood out for me was the ability to create a vision for my spiritual growth my spiritual pathway my spiritual life so that even on days when i'm tired even on days when i don't feel like it i show up i come through because i have a, a vision at heart for who I'm trying to become. Then the second thing I will encourage you to do is find a company. You see, the Bible says something about Judah in Deuteronomy. It says Judah's strength was seen because he found his own. In, in his company, he had strength. Until you're in your company, there is no strength. Because when you lack strength, one in your company bears you up and holds you on right so you're not standing alone you're not acting alone you're not behaving alone you're not pushing alone there is a propelling force of a tribe of a people who keep you centered who keep you grounded so that you don't begin to see visions of yourself as the holy spirit and other funny visions like that we are kept under authority when we submit to authority and that puts us in authority so when i stay under authority 
in the midst of my tribe. It puts me in authority because I have somebody to checkmate me. For example, I have my tribe of people that by God's mercy, I'm privileged to lead, right? And then there's another tribe that I'm part of, and that's the company where I'm submitted. I am under authority. And when my spiritual father says, rejoice, sit, I sit. When he says, rejoice, don't, I do not. I, I am under authority. And then where in the place where I am in authority, my authority is more effective because I'm subject to an authority that is higher than me. And so this is something that we must learn. You must have a company. And not every company is for you. Not every tribe is for you. The fact that it is popular, the fact that everyone is there does not mean that that is your place. So you must go to the Lord. I believe it's Jeremiah 3.15 that says, I will give you pastors. I will give you shepherds after my own heart. So that means that I'm going to transcend beyond your feelings and I'm going to superimpose on your pictures and give you a place that I believe that is best for you so god can give you his best without apology and without reservations and then thirdly have a plan a vision without a plan is a daydream a vision without a plan is a daydream but one of the strengths of visions is that it gives you that opportunity to put it into a plan. Even when you have a, a tribe and a company, it's very important that you have a personal growth plan. I call it a PDP, not People's Democratic Party, but a personal development plan because it gives me permission to look at my life, look at my current state and begin to draw out a plan of who I am where I want to go and how I want to get there. And so in that plan, the actions that I take in that plan are my decisions on my outcome and where I'm trying to get to as part of my journey. I really hope that this has answered your questions. Don't forget to register for the Secret Place Challenge. I really look forward to you being a part of that journey and you growing better and better in your walk with God. Until I come your way next time. It's bye from me for now.